Let's take a look at some of the stories making headlines this morning and thousands of South African opposition activists rally in Pretoria to demand a faster coronavirus vaccination rollout in the continent's worst heat country. The far left opposition Economic Freedom Fighters Party is also pushing for the use of Chinese and Russian vaccines, warning it would stage a sit-in at the home of the regulator's chairwoman if it did not approve the emergency use of the jabs within seven days. With less than 4% of South Africa's 59 million population inoculated, protesters are calling on regulators to approve more vaccines and speed up the pace of inoculations to get people back to work and kickstart the economy. In a gathering criticized as a possible, possible rather super spread event, Efforts or EFF uh, supporters clad in red party regalia marched to the offices of the health products regulator to demand the approval of more vaccines. Back home and 13-year-old Linda Cherono, who was found dead on the 14th of June in Moyes Bridge after she went missing, has been buried at her home in El Dama Maravin, Baringo County, while comforting the family area leaders as well as residents called on the government to investigate the murder and bring justice to those behind the incident. Engulfed Sinendet village in El Dama Ravine during the burial of 13-year-old Linda Cherono. Cherono's mutilated body was found dumped in a maize plantation near the National Cereals and Produce Board in Moise Bridge Town on the 14th of June after she had gone missing for some days. <laughs> Our hearts really cried. Chirono was expected to join Form 1 in August this year and she had visited her relatives before she met her death. May they never get peace in their lives. Wasipada amani kabisa hata siku moja. Kwa sababu uchungu yenyewe mtoto alipitia kabla ya jafa ndo kitu tunalia zaidi. Na mwenye alifanya hiyo na mwenye alifanya hiyo wacha wapate uchungu zaidi. Leaders took the platform to call on parents to look after their children, but also urged religious leaders to pray for the nation over the rising incidences of brutal murder across the country. Families who have lost their children are still seeking justice, with others withdrawing their case due to lack of faith in the government in their pursuit of justice. Ministry eh, ambayo inasimamia mambo ya watoto. Watoto sikuizo wameangamishwa sana. Kuna child abuse, kuna raping, kuna mambo mingi mabaya sikuizi inafanywa watoto. Na tunaona serikali yetu imenyamaza kimyaki. Chirono is among nine other teens and preteen girls who have been raped, killed, and their bodies badly mutilated in a span of two years in Moise Bridge. Ruth Sarmoy, NTV. Now, two suspects connected with the kidnapping of a Kamukunji businesswoman, Hafsa Mohammed, have been apprehended and are both were arrested at a lodge in Kenangop, Nyandarwa County. And the suspects are thought to have siphoned 650,000 shillings from her bank account and headed to buy a bar in Kenangop. Hafsa is currently demanding justice, stating she was lured into a business deal by a neighbor just for her neighbor to become the mastermind behind her kidnapping. She bears scars and bruises that continue to remind her of the horrific ordeal she went through. Feeling betrayed, she relieves the memories of the day. Probably regretting why she said yes to the business deal, which has altered the course of her life spending five horrific days in the hands of her abductors. So from that, we can funga funga macho mkono na mgu. 
Kaniweka kwa mtungi, kanitoa. Wakaniweka ma, wakanipeleka mali ngine. Kaniambia usikuwa na wasiwasi, tutaongea na kwenu. Si tunataka tu pesa, haja tu ni pesa. DCI officers arrested the suspected abductors, 24-year-old Jackson Jogu and 21-year-old Hafsa Abdi in Kinangop, where they had fled to seek refuge with some of the 650,000 shillings they had siphoned out of Hafsa's bank account. Tulikuwa jirani, hatukuwa tunajuana sana. So, mshana akachukua namba angu, kanitafuta. Kaniambia, tunataka tukue business shares. The abductors had demanded a ransom of 5 million shillings from Hafsa's family. And when they got wind that the family was working closely with the DCI officers, they took off. I wish to register our appreciation to all the security men and women, national and regional, up to those on the streets and the neighborhoods who put their lives at the front line in order to keep us safe. We are sincerely grateful. Hafsa was kidnapped on 15th June 2021 and was later set free about a week ago. Helen Aura, NTV. To health matters and health officials want the government to develop sensitization and awareness programs on suicide in the country. In Bungoma County, residents are urging county officials to make safe dams that have allegedly transformed into death traps for people with adverse mental health issues that may lead to death by suicide. NTV Health and Wellness reporter Eunice Omono with that report. The lush green food and vegetation carpets the rural part of Bungoma County. Here, irrigation farming is key and done using such dams for farming the lands. Reliance on such dams for irrigation is heavy. The dams are, however, turning into a nightmare among the residents. Namuninge village, Bungoma County, Jacob Wanjala relieves memories of his late wife who died by suicide at the Namuninge Dam. For many residents, the darkness around the dam is a cause of concern. They now seek the relevant authorities to bring them closure by having it drained or possibly fenced. Yule mtuyota anafikiria kuchiua. Mtuyota anafikiria maybe kukuja kuoga. Apate kuna askari ama kuna mlinzi. Kama na haja ya kutembea kwenye damu, apatane na wale watu wa muelekese. We sought to find out plans by the county officials to protect the area. Giza kama hivyo, wazi natokezea. Na hata kama tumefence, wazi natokezea. Uh, tuna uwezo sana, ini mambo ya shetani. Lakini kama county, tunaimiza wanainji waangalie. Um, advantages za kuwa na hizo dams na walinganishe na zile maafa wanasema tuone uh, 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 gani na zidi ingine haya ni mambo ya kijami ni kuhimiza tu kupitia kwa viongozi wao kwa kuwe na guiding and counseling mzuri ili tuepukane visa kama hizi According to the Mental Health Task Force, suicide prevention mechanisms are key in addressing the issue and creating awareness among Kenyans to deal with the stigma surrounding suicide. In reality, it's a condition of the mental condition. Eh? Maybe somebody has been sick, he's been going through depression, uh, undergoing a lot of stress and depression up to that level of committing suicide. But most people don't understand that it began as a problem. In a section of the country, it is associated with taboo. Uh, upande wa mashishi kama ni kwetu huko nyumbani eh huyo mtu hafai wamusike mchana na haifai wamfanyia ipaata huyo mtu inafaa wakimtoa mochari siku hiyo yeye amefika umetengeneza kaburi na ni nyuma ya nyumba wanakuja wanasika eh na watu wenye wanasika eh sio lazima kuwe watu wa huko wanatafuta tu watu hata sana sana kuwe kama mwenda wazimu hivi eh yani watu wenye wanafuta pangi hivi eh hao ndio wanafaa waende wasike na kaburi yake wisi simama na kwa tu flat According to health officials, mental health issues are to be arrested on time before they escalate. These issues are exacerbated 
uh, by the economic deprivations exacerbated with issues of COVID-19. You know, many people lost jobs, uh, children were abandoned. It led to a lot of domestic abuse and violence. And all these things make people become very hopeless and feel like they cannot live, you know, or they, they don't see a future for their lives. And so, uh, uh, so people look for an easier way of escape. When you talk about suicide, it's just an easier way of escape from this life. There are several warnings to be looked out for to assist someone who is suicidal. Talking about wanting to die, looking for a way to kill oneself, talking about feelings of hopelessness or having no purpose, feeling trapped or in unbearable pain, talking about being a burden to others, increasing the use of alcohol or drugs, acting anxious, agitated or recklessly. Some may also experience sleeping too little or too much, withdrawing or feeling isolated, showing rage or talking about seeking revenge. Others display extreme mood swings. Mildred Nekesa, a widow and a mother of six, was not aware that these signs would lead to the death of her husband by suicide. Juu mara nyingi, ilikuwa ukimuuliza jambo, atachukua muda ndiposa kujibu. Na ukimuuliza kama we ni mgonjwa, aizi kuambia kama ni mgonjwa, atasema tu ni kosawa. Na ukimuuliza ama kuna shida yoyote, hakuweza kutambua. Alikuwa ni mtu msiri na mnyamafu. There have been calls to the government to decriminalize suicide in Kenya. The government should also have a, a regulation, a facility that collects them because they are dealing with somebody who is sick. What drove me to committing suicide? They should uh, first address my problems because by the time I reached there, nobody was listening to me. So the government only comes in to tell you you should not take away your life. But when I'm going through a lot of depression, a lot of hardships, the government is not available. Globally, 59 countries have decriminalized suicide. Eunice Omolo, NTV. Now to a focus of the day, the only child. Now events guru Chris Kirwa says growing up an only child took a toll on him as a person. He spoke to a roving reporter Brian Mushiri on today's episode of Your Voice. This morning on Your Voice, I speak to businessman and events mogul Chris Kirwa. However, we're not talking about any of his businesses or the event space, even though it's been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we talk about the man. He's an only child. Can you believe it? And he joins me on Zoom right now. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's a good day. It, it is a good day. Fantastic to have you here. Yes. Let, yes. Let's just take it from the top. You're an only child and you hardly talk about this. Why? When you wake up one day and then you realize everybody is speaking about their brothers and sisters, and you have nothing to talk about, it starts affecting you in a way. So the way to deal with that is to shut down. You don't speak. You, you don't tell people. You rarely give this kind of interview. So I think this is the first time I'm actually giving an interview like this. And it's because um, it affects you from the day you are young all the way. Okay, right now I can cope with it. But during my teenage years, it was not easy. Yeah. Let me just ask... What were the circumstances under which uh, you found yourself like this? Is it that your parents perhaps ended the family at that? What circumstances did you find yourself into? They ended it at that. And then also um, my dad passed away when I was still young. Then my mother when I was, um, I think, 20. Yeah, so you end up being alone in the world. So it's not something you find it easy to speak about. And it affects you for a very long time. Uh, but then as you grow older, you learn how to cope with it. But it's not easy. Yeah. Let me just ask, uh, how was it when you were younger? I mean, first losing your father, then your mom. And now you have to grow up really fast. How was it for you? Um, I always say when you find yourself on ground zero, the only way is up. But that up is a journey of a lot of... Um, let me call it pain. Let me call it um, trying to trying to get something to fill the void. And how I was doing it was um, if you meet a friend, you end up doing a lot for that friend. And in the process, because obviously, you know, people either cannot process why somebody is too good to them or they were just there to maybe 
get what they wanted from me and bounce. So when they bounce, it really used to affect me. What I didn't know is that every time I met, let's say, Brian, what I will do is I try and make them and try and give them the love I would have given my brother or sister. But you see, that, that cannot work. So when they, either they don't reciprocate or they bounce, so it affects me. So I had a lot of that uh, when, when, when growing up, where people, I kept feeling that people are not uh, appreciative of the care, because I'll go out of my way to just help you in anything, you know, be there for you, and then you bounce. What I didn't know is that I was trying to make a brother or a sister out of a normal friend or a casual um, association. Can you single-handedly pick out moments in your life when you were significantly low because of the fact that you had no siblings? <laughs> Christmas Day, um, Easter, August. You know, those are the days that people, you know, go out to celebrate with their family. So you'll see guys saying, okay, I'm here. We are, we are here to see our grandma and we are here with the siblings and we are having a party. We are celebrating. We went to church. We came back. You know, all those things. So what are you posting? So it's not, I don't think it's a single occurrence. It's every season. Okay. <laughs> it's every season. <laughs> now we're finalizing this conversation. I mean, now you're Chris Kiro. Now you're a brand. And <laughs> I'm imagining you're a family man now. How is it now yes. married? There are those that say, if you are born alone, you tend to compensate with the number of children that you have. Is it true? <laughs> Where are you as far as family is concerned? There is, there is that tendency, of course, if you didn't have uh, siblings, you will want to have very many kids. If you didn't want to have parents, you, you try and do everything possible to, to give your kids what probably you never got and you can end up suffocating them with the attention and love. You can also end up suffocating your spouse. You can end up being needy. Yeah, so your spouse is wondering, hey, what's up with this guy? Because, again, remember, you're trying to fill that void that exists and will always exist within your life. Yeah, so, like I said, <clears throat> I'm a bit older now. So you do your research, you talk to people, you can actually come to a, prog a program like this and speak. And so you start healing and knowing that there are other people who are worse, who probably didn't even know who that i mean like now they they're orphans yes and um, we are big on that we, we like supporting orphans a lot and maybe that's part of it i am very sensitive when it comes to people without parents so maybe that's part of the manifestation of it chris any final remarks um i think if you ever when when you're in a social gathering um and you come we all come from different family setups be try and look at each other and say, okay, where does this guy come from? Where does this girl come from? How is their family background? How do we make sure we don't say something or do something that can hurt them? How do we accommodate them? So I think these are the kind, and I'm happy you called me to discuss this. It should trigger a conversation towards this because I don't think anybody has ever spoken about it. I'm not so sure anybody has ever spoken about this. So I'll just say thank you for bringing this up. It should be something that should be discussed and maybe invite more people uh, to be able to discuss it. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, businessman, events mogul, Chris Kiro, right there. The conversation is on being the only child. That's your episode this morning of Your Voice. My name is Brian Mushiri. Good morning. A very insightful conversation there between Brian and Chris Kirwa and definitely brings to the fore the different intricacies when it comes to growing up as an only child and of course their worldview and those that get to mingle with them in the journey of life. Now, as I mentioned, this is what we are focusing on even as we continue with a series on birth orders. And uh, to help us along with this conversation in studio, we have Gregory Moura, who is a counseling psychologist. And of course, we have only children joining us. Hannah Wanjirombogwa 
Yvette Margaret Wanzu in Studio 2 and Brenda Waloe who is joining us virtually from home. Thank you ladies for being part of this conversation and just in case you're wondering why we do not have a guy on this one. For some reason the guys shied off but I'm glad that Chris Kiro was able to represent uh, the male folk. But before we get to that conversation there's something that's happening this morning and media, the Nation Media Group is kicking off Kenya's first share buy back program and then Nairobi Securities Exchange. Now the company targets buying back up to 10% of its issued shares between today and September 24th. Now we are joined by NTV's business editor Julian Amboko with more. Julian? Many thanks, Gladys. As you rightly mentioned, this is Kenya's first equity repurchase, or as many like to call it, share buyback program. And this is being done by the Nation Media Group, and the exercise will be taking place between the 28th of June, that is today, and the September 24th. And of course, this comes on the back of the issuance of uh, the circular, which was issued by the boards, uh, the company's board, I should say, on May 29th, 2021, indicating it was intent upon going back to the market and mopping up as much as 20.7 million issued shares. Shares. And this comes again on the back of the regulations which were issued by the Capital Markets Authority in mid last year. Remember, this provision has always been in the Companies Act of 2015. The fact that it, we didn't have regulations, that's why we were not able to have any company come to the market and be able to repurchase their shares. And one of the things which uh, normally underlies this sort of action by corporates, not just in Kenya but across the world, is the fact that you are persuaded that your share price is undervalued. And by that I mean that the fact that the market, uh, the market value is not reflecting the underlying fundamentals of the companies. And this definitely is one of the reasons why ever since this announcement was made by the Nation Media Group, we have seen the share price surge by as much as 30%. And if you're a shareholder, definitely that is something which has excited you. And this is an exercise which we are all looking forward to in terms of being able to be able to sell back shares to the company. But remember, if you read the circular, no one is under obligation to be part of this exercise. It is out of one's own volition in terms of their investment decisions as an individual. But the company, of course, has gone to the market and has sent every indication. If you look at the program today, we shall be having speeches by the chief executive officers of the NSC, that is Jeffrey Dundo of uh, Nation Media Group, that is Stephen Gitagama, as well as the Capital Markets Authority, that is Mr. Wycliffe Shamian. We'll also be having the board chairman of Nation Media Group, that is Mr. Wil Dr. Wilfred Kiboro speak, as well as the chairperson of the Nation, of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, I should say, who is uh, Kiprono Kitoni. And therefore, this is something which, of course, is give, being given the kind of significance it merits being the first ever exercise. We do anticipate that this will be a trigger for many other companies to come back to the market to be able to buy back their shares. We know in the past, Centum Investments has indicated its intent to be able to come back and repurchase shares. Crown Paints, which currently is having a rights issue, had also indicated a lot earlier that it intends to have a share buyback. So we wait to see whether their boards will take this route and we certainly will be here throughout the morning before the market opens at 9.30 a.m. So we shall be bringing you all the details around this share repurchase exercise. And if you're a Nation Media shareholder, stay tuned for all the updates. Back to you, Gladys. Thank you, NTV's business editor, Julian Samboko, with all the details. And this is historic, as he mentioned, that the Nation Media Group is kicking off Kenya's fast share buyback program at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And the company targets buying back up to 10% of its issued shares between today and September the 24th. And uh, Julian Samboko and the team will be taking us through that even as uh, the event unfolds later on in the day. Well, let's focus back on that conversation of the morning, the only child. And uh, it is interesting that uh, as uh, Chris Kirwa put it across, not many people talk about this and the assumption is that these children live a life of privilege. Well, coming from his perspective, clearly there's a lot more to talk about and in as far as experiences of the only children are concerned. And uh, Gregory, at this point, when you were listening to Chris Kirwa, are you surprised by what he was saying? Uh, not really, not really. I, that is exactly what, uh, what individuals undergo. When you look at uh, the only child, one, it may be biological, the other one, it may be situational. Biological in the sense that I was born alone, either a male or a female. When I'm a male, it's actually worse than a female. Reasons possibly will explore more. The other one is when I'm the only successful kid. Uh, when 
when I'm on the, oh, the only successful kid, all the responsibilities of actually overseeing the other, the, the, the other kids, um, it's only with me. And you see a child being parentified. You start taking the, the, the responsibilities of the family very early. So you're no longer enjoying the, the aspect of being a child. So that is another, another, another aspect of it. And um, another aspect of being, uh, of being parentified is when, uh, or, or the only child, you're either successful, you're born alone, or you, or you, you find yourself in a situation where you've been left with other, with, with other kids, mm -hmm. with other kids. You're the only child, such that you, you stop becoming, you stop growing normally. You start taking responsibilities very high. It is as a result of the situation, mm -hmm. i.e., uh, where you found yourself in terms of socialization and also as a person, as a person. Uh, situational in, 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 the, in the sense that uh, uh, the environment or in the sense that you've been parentified, you start taking responsibilities of other grown-up kids or other kids inside your family and it is actually looked, looked upon you. Or if you're the only boy in the African culture, Mm -hmm. where the boy is so much picked on a higher level than even the girls, mm -hmm. or even being the girl in the only uh, boy's uh, kids. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a challenge. And, uh, yeah, and also, how they turn out, yes, there is that uh, what he has said, that you don't have brothers, you don't have sisters, you don't have any other, uh, other person. But the key responsibility is on a functional parent. A functional parent giving birth is one thing being a functional parent is another thing so uh, I, I think for me um, parenting needs to be taken seriously because for me if you ask me as a psychologist all the issues in the world are so much pegged on the parent and kindly parents if you're listening to me let us mature up to be functional parents so what we are saying is even as we talk about the various birth uh, orders the parent plays a key role in how that child turns out. So much, so All much, right. so much. Okay, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's hear the experiences of only children. And I'll start off with you, Hannah. What was your experience growing up? Um, I wouldn't say I grew up alone, because most of my life I grew around my cousins and uh, my relatives. And I went to boarding school since I was in class four. So I was around people. I can't say I was alone. Uh -huh. yes. But still, you are the only child of your parents. So some would say, OK, fine, these are the kids that are normally spoiled. They want for nothing. Did you experience that? Do you still have that? I think I never talked about it a lot. Yeah. So not so many people know that I'm an only child. Yes, not to so many people who know that. I'm sure people will be surprised, but uh, I can't say I, I got everything I wanted, mm -hmm. but I didn't lack everything that I needed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Now, here's the uh, thing. Uh, you said you were taking, taken to boarding school. And most yes. people, I think, would think a parent would be very, you know, protective over their children to even release them to the world on their own. At mm -hmm. what point did you go to boarding school? High school or primary? Primary at, in class four. Really? What yes. were the circumstances? Uh, my mother was a single parent, uh -huh. and uh, she needed to work. She traveled a lot, so I don't think she had time to take care of me, so she had to take me to boarding school. Mm -hmm. And what yes. was your experience now mingling with other children from different backgrounds, of course, with more siblings, which is the case in the African society? Could you tell there some things you perhaps struggled with? Uh, I struggled in um, communication. Like I'm very poor in um, like reaching out to people and uh, you know the way you call people and find out how are you, how are you doing. I don't know how to do that. I think I was so much on my space that it's not easy to allow people into my space. So I struggled with that. I was always alone. Uh -huh. And uh, speaking of which, you grew up on your own, then you go to boarding school in class four and you have to share all this space with other kids. How was that for you? Uh, I think that was okay. 
Uh -huh. That was okay because I was so used to having my cousins around, so I can't say I'm, I'm alone per se. Mm -hmm. So sharing was not a problem. Okay, interesting, interesting. Let's hear from Yvette. What is your experience growing up? My experience growing up as an only child was interesting. It's a bit of a mixture of both, so sometimes it gets lonely, but at, at other times, because just like um, the other lady said, um, you get to, you know, meet with your cousins and most of the time when you're, it's during school holidays or family functions and you get to mingle with other people who are your relatives. But when it's just me alone at home, then it used to get a bit lonely. Um, maybe at school when people are picking fights, then you don't have a sibling to protect you or to have your back. But um, it was just a mixture of both. Um, a very interesting experience, but a mixture of both, both good and bad. Okay, so uh, even as we talk about the good and, and the bad, let me pose the same question I posed to Hannah. Would you feel like you were spoiled for nothing? No. Spoiled? No. I wouldn't say I was spoiled. I, I'll however say that at least because all the resources were pointed towards me, uh -huh. many often times than not, I was able to get the things that I needed when I needed them. But spoiled, I wouldn't say so because um, I, I come from a single parent family and my mother really tried to strike the balance so that I wouldn't wind up spoiled. But I did manage to get a lot of things that if I was sharing those resources with a sibling, I wouldn't manage to get them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what happened mm -hmm. when it came to playing? How was that for you, considering you're alone in the house? Did you feel the need to go looking for, you know, company or sit back and say, I wish I had a brother or sister? I did. I did. Um, most of the time, I used to play alone. So you'd find me talking to myself a lot because it's just me in the house anyway. Um, I used to make games that would only suit me. Um, I, I remember oftentimes I used to try and play, you know, like a TV anchor because that only requires me to be able to play such games. But at times it used to get really lonely. It used to get really lonely. So I used to talk to myself a lot, um, do a lot of role play. So maybe I'm the seller and I'm in the market and I'm also the buyer. I just used to talk to myself a lot. And then, of course, um, sometimes when you're in school, then you manage to be able to play with other children or maybe when you go for family functions or even birthdays with family, friends, then now you get company and you can play. But most of the time, I used to play alone. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, let's hear what uh, Brenda has to say about her experience. And remember, when we talk about spoiled here, it is different for different people. There are those who say just the fact that you had undivided attention in itself is being mm -hmm. spoiled because in a bigger family where the kids kind of get lost in the, in the numbers, I mean, having it all to yourself is a way of getting spoiled. So anyway, so what's your experience, Brenda? Um, pretty similar to what Ethan is saying, actually. I was just laughing as she was talking about, um, you know, doing a lot of role play when you're playing and spending time by yourself. I had a similar experience. Um, I spent, of course, a lot of time alone, and I learned to really enjoy that bubble. So for me, I think I played for 37 um, to be part because that's just who I am. Generally, I enjoy being my own space, my own bubble. So I genuinely enjoyed that side of things. And just like what Hannah was saying, my mom also really tried to strike a balance. I'm also raised by a single mom. Um, and she really tried to strike a balance. So she exposed me to uh, my cousins and you know other kids around the neighborhood. So when I needed to have people around and friends around, I had them. And when I wanted to be alone and have my own space, I would have that as well. So there was a bit of a balance going on. So you are literally eating your cake and having your cake and eating it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. Right. I guess in that picture, was a little spoiled. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. So back to Gregory. We have th three ladies all brought up by a single parent. From your experience, are these scenarios more often than not compared to a family with a father and a mother? Yes, yes. Um, mostly... Uh, the phenomenon of the only child uh, comes from the from the single lady uh, reality, and uh, it's more it's more real there, and it's more often there than mm -hmm. 
where the two spouses are there and they decide possibly to have one kid and if they de de decide to have one kid mostly it's because of maybe um, uh, a, a, a challenge mm -hmm. within the procreation uh, phenomena so they decide since we love each other and we came in and uh, we came in for ourselves and uh, children are a fruit of our marriage let's stay together and we are good to go so uh, it happens there and they're more affected individuals who have been brought up by two parents mm -hmm. are more affected than individuals who have been brought up by one parent how when when we look at the family, we look at it from some, some aspects. One being as a system, is a systemic aspect. Within this particular system, there are expectations. I have my own expectation. My wife would have maybe expectation for this particular child. Mm -hmm. So you find when there is maybe tension in the family, there is a phenomenon we call tranquilization. I, I would call the child in to ease the, uh, the tension in the family. So you'll find this particular child being triangulated right and center, right, left, and center, without even understanding who they are. So the aspect to identify themselves, to have a self-concept of who they are, and subsequently integrating, becoming individuals, and finding a path for themselves, mm -hmm. become actually a great, 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 great challenge. It will be a challenge if either of the parent is an assist or is not really functional. Mm -hmm. Because these people will be, there will be no peace in the house. There will be blames. There will be, we have done a lot for you, for you and you're not giving us results. So, mm -hmm. and, but still be the boy or be a male. Because males are very aggressive in terms of how they do their things. We are more aggressive than ladies. So you find that the two parents or the par the two parents will not allow your aggressiveness to come through. So it becomes a, actually a challenge for you to actually come out as a male, as a male. Mm -hmm. And as a male is that competitiveness, that competitiveness. It's actually biological because I have testosterone and testosterone is very, is very competitive. So it is actually a phenomenon that we don't pay attention to. And guys, guys outside there are actually hurting, especially when it is the boy child. And that is why part of this particular interview, we don't have them. Oh. Because the, the, having to identify myself, having to have space for myself in this particular phenomenon become an uphill task. Okay, interesting yes. perspective. Now, let's go back to the fact that you said if you come from a family with a father and a mother you run a chance of having it more difficult than somebody from a single family. Now, I'm sure people are thinking it should be the other way around. Mm -hmm. So why is it that the single family setup is actually more ideal for the single child? Um, because of this one, 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 uh, one parent. Mm -hmm. So this one parent understands the roles and the responsibility have to bring up this particular child. And they take it wholly. It is me and nobody else to bring up this child. On the other side, when the two spouses are there, uh, it is so difficult because I have my own, there is a perfect child I have as a parent. So that is what I want from you. And also on the other, uh, uh, the other side, my spouse wants this particular perfect child in this particular child. So the, 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 the forces that will be there, because we have different roles that we play in a family. Mm -hmm. There is a nebler, there is a, the comedian, there is, so who plays this role? So this particular child is actually, it's like a burden being there because the attention of the two parents, now here you have the, the, the attention of one child. On the other side, you have the attention of the two parents, all with their different needs, different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we are not careful as parents, we meet our childhood needs that we didn't meet through our kids and that, it normally happens so i yes. guess it's even worse off when there's it's only one child doubled uh -huh. it's actually doubled or it, it's it's a reality that when you think about it uh -huh. I, i've been in session with such individuals and uh, i really i really for me it, it's a parents it's a parents 
Okay, we'll get back to that in a moment. Let me hear from the ladies. Hannah, when you think about what Gregory is saying, and uh, parents are parents, and uh, you are one now. Are you a parent now? Yes, I am. And uh, there's always that innate the need to do all the things you were not able to do through your children. Did you feel the same pressure from your mom? Yes, I did. Uh huh. And how did that look like? Um, it's different when you you have like for me, I have three children. Mm -hmm. When are you alone? Your mom wants all the attention to go to you. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, she. She will cling on you. Mm -hmm. You have no space. Uh, you, have no, you have no space. Yeah. So when you have children, you have to divide their attention. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. All right, yes. I hear you. So you feel mm. like you have no space to be yourself because you're the center of attention. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. so this is the flip side, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I see that uh, smiling because I guess you you actually identify with what Hannah is saying. What's your experience with that? Um, I, I get when she says that you have no space. Mm -hmm. For me, um, I was very, I don't know why, I, I felt like I was very, very, very sheltered. Like she was always trying to make sure you know, I don't expose myself too much out there. So if it's playing, she's like, no, just play in the house. If it's, she really wants you around her all the time. Like she wants to, you know, it's like a mother hen kind of thing. So she wants you in her space around a lot and wants to know everything that's going on with you. Um, so it would feel nice sometimes, maybe if you have siblings, to share that attention with someone else so the spotlight cannot be on you all the time. Mm. Oh, yeah. wow. Whoever thought that would be actually a problem. And uh, let me hear from Brenda. Same thing for you too? Um, actually, mine was quite different. Uh, my mom was very liberal, if I could say that. So she allowed me a lot of space to kind of just do what I wanted or rather to kind of find my own path and find my own footing. So she was very keen on, you know, just allowing me to be out there, interact with people. She exposed me a lot, let's put it that way. She exposed me a lot to people, um, different experiences. So it was a bit different for me. The only thing um, she was very keen on was to constantly on the phone, you know, tell me where you are, what you're doing, who you're with, you know. She mm -hmm. had all my friends' numbers, so anytime I'm out, she had to know who I was with at all times. So I guess in that regard, um, she was kind of hovering, but she allowed me a lot of space to kind of just find my path. So she was yeah. still overprotective. Yeah, she had her moment of being a bit overprotective, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for Hannah and Yvette, has this continued into your adulthood? Like you feel y they need to still know who you're dating, who you're hanging out with, Yvette? No, it hasn't. I think it's eased up over time. So um, as I got older and I gained a bit of my independence, she started to ease up on it a bit. And she did, um, I will point out that she did allow me to be my own person. She was just very protective of me. So she did allow me, because I'm very talkative, um, she did allow me to explore my talents, um, get new opportunities where there was, but she was very uh, protective of me. But now, even as I get older and I'm a parent, as well I still see aspects of her being protective over me for instance she calls me every morning and every evening um sometimes when you're talking to her in the evening and it's late and you're not home yet she'll ask you so what time are you planning on getting home is everything okay so it still trickles a bit into my adulthood but I can tell that now that I'm older and a parent myself she allows me to be my own person uh -huh. and just to explore as well Hannah for you has it stopped no <laughs> okay, yeah. how does it look like for you now? Um, she'll still call me, as Yvette said, like in the morning, in the evening, check on you. When you tell her you're going out, she's like, okay, what time are you going home? Are you home? When you get home, please call me. You know, she'll really insist on what's happening in your life and wants to know what are you up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't ease in so much because uh. she, has, she has nobody else to call anyway. Aha, yeah. uh -huh. but every morning and every evening, every yes. day. Every single day, even during the day. She calls you once, you don't pick, she will call until you pick.
Uh huh. Now yeah. that Gregory is really insistent that it takes the parent and the child to actually make this relationship work. When we come back from the break, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like to hear from Gregory. What is the impact of what you guys have talked about having a smothering or overprotective parent over you just because you're an only child? We'll be right back. Ishaya Multi Business Cut uh, is an innovative product that consists of five businesses, uh, of which you can run four of the businesses simultaneously. Sea turtles in Watamu are a spectacular scene, but their survival now hangs in the balance as they increasingly get poached for their meat and oil. To report gender-based violence, call the toll-free line 1195, download the Comesha the Luma app, or dial star 483 star 306 hash. Kua bazu true. Tajirika na chuma. Whether it's TMT bars, hollow sections, angle lines, or any other steel, we've got you covered. Earn chuma points every time you purchase steel at any of our factories. Redeem them at your next purchase. Earn one point for every 100 shillings spent. Visit tononoka.com for more information. Terms and conditions apply. Tajirika na chuma. Tajirika na tononoka. Chuma si chuma, chuma ni tononoka. Collabo na Shell, Shinda Fuso FI is back and bigger. Waka Collabo na Shell Fuels plus Shell Lubricants, Africa's Osho Pata Convenience Shop. To enter the draw, dial star 384 star 200 hash, enter the code from your voucher and follow the prompts. Terms and conditions apply. And click the, the fella said it. He said that he was a...
invest in the prime plots from Finca Properties Limited, Equator Gardens, Nanyuki, a gated community. that have actually been watered down this morning. Now, helping us along with this conversation is Gregory Moura. He's a counseling psychologist. We have only, only children joining us, Hannah Wanjiro Mbogwa, Yvette Margaret Wanzu, and uh, Brenda Waloe joining us virtually. Ladies, thank you for being here to tell your story. And uh, before we went to break, they were all talking about the fact that when they were growing up, their parent was overprotective. And to date, they still feel like they are still part and parcel of them because they never make them forget or let them forget. Yes. Some would say that is sort of smothering the child. And clearly, these are ladies from a single parent home. So clearly, whichever setup, they're normally challenges. So how and what would be the impact of this kind of being overprotected? Um, the interaction between a parent and a child, especially from birth, is what gives somebody their psychological blueprint, the interaction. So fast forward, what we are seeing as overprotection, it actually hinders somebody from, first of all, identifying themselves. When I ask, because, because of this overprotection and I'm mendling on your issues as a parent, i.e. You, you, want, you want something that is very far, I bring it closer to you. Uh, this is a challenge, I do it for you. Uh, I don't want you to really strain because you're, 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 the, the, you're the only child. So I, 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 I risk not allowing you to initiate. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I impede you in trusting the world. You know, I impede you from learning that you can do stuff for yourself. I impede you from even getting your identity fast forward. This is where the reality, the reality now comes into play. I am negotiating my identity 12 years uh, moving forward. I don't have maybe a brother. I've not been um, exposed to cousins or even the neighbors. I've grown as the only child because maybe families have their own um, their own challenges, i.e. the extended family. So I got you, maybe you're rejected, rah, rah, or a lot of things that... Um, are revolving around you as a child. So I have grown in this particular bubble. And at, at the adolescent, I need to get my own identity. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's so, 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 so tough. Identity means I need to find a way of doing my own things. What really moves me? What makes me tick? What, what I want? What are my boundaries? What are, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are the things that I want to do for myself? Uh, fast forward, uh, integrating possibly 20, 25 years integrating now, understanding this is me, this is how I do my things, and this is what I want things to do. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Because of why this particular per per person really impedes you. What happens? Because I have to contain you as my mother, one, I either, I either numb my emotions. I'll never show you that I am mad at you. Because you're the only security. Mm. You're the only person who really understands me. You're the only person who, who I can run to. So even if you step on my toe, I will not tell you, mom, I didn't like because you did one, two, three. All right? So, uh, or, 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 or mom and dad, I really don't like what, what, what is happening. Mark you. Because families have a challenge, I'll still go to the, to, the, um, to, the, to, the, to the mother and the father kind of family, because there will still be conflict in, in the family. Who do I run to? And when I run to this particular parent, he's not actually letting me know what I don't need to know as a child. 
Because the conflict between two parents should not trickle down to a child. It should actually be handled at the couple system. But because of lack of even not maturing to be a couple, a functional couple, and coupled with not maturing to be a functional uh, parent, I'll find information that is not supposed to go to the child going. So you find this particular individual carrying a lot of burden, numping their emotions, not being able to express their emotions, not able to actually create space for themselves. Uh, if, you f if, if they are released in a group and... Um, it really works very well when we want to understand these particular individuals, whether they have skills and competences at every development. As a child, put them in a, in a, in a group of kids. Mm -hmm. You'll find them not being able to create space for themselves. Why? There was no that, that, um, that challenge that comes with having a brother or a sister. This is my cup. No, I placed it here. That argument and really coming forward and really establishing yourself and having, a space, having to create space for yourself. So these particular kids, whenever they are challenged on the other side, resilience is very low. Some resilience is very low because in a family, that is where you learn. That is where you learn uh, to be resilient, you know, to be challenged by others. The world outside here is actually very lethal. So you'll find themselves keeping a lot to themselves. Mark you, if you have such a partner, you, it is you who will be actually be reaching them, not them reaching to you because they don't know reaching out to someone. They actually live in an island that has nobody else, and it's very beautiful. It has <laughs> grass, it has everything. But for them, they're self-sustaining. You know, unless now, as a partner, you, you understand their psychology and you're mm -hmm. reaching out, you allow yourself to be vulnerable to them, and them to actually learn that you're vulnerable to them for them to learn vulnerability. Because, believe you me, they don't know vulnerability. Interesting perspective there, and I am so curious to know, Hannah, you're married, yeah? Yes. Okay. So, who are you in a relationship, in a marriage? I'm the, I'm the, I'm the most quiet one. Like, um, like he said, uh -huh. you, uh, what do, how do I put it? The way it is. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be vulnerable. Vulnerability. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not able to, like the way he said, I allow people to come into my space and I don't know how to say this is my space. So, I don't know how to put it. Really. So it's the <laughs> boundaries, creating boundaries for yourself. Yes. Uh-huh. And yes. Uh, when you are relating with your husband, he comes from a bigger family? Yes. And uh, how is that now? You coming from a space where it was only me and him mm. coming from a space with the more children around him? Uh, we don't have a problem with that because he's also, um, he loves his space. Mm. So we don't struggle with the fact that uh, he, he's grown up in a family of three boys. So it's like we are one of, one of a kind. Yeah, we like our own space. So he's an introvert. Yes, he's an introvert. Ah, I see how it would make it easier for you. Yes, yes. for All us right. it's easy. But mm. when it comes in to crisis, because I mean, every couple, every you know, relationship will always have ups and downs. Mm. Who now takes center stage? Who takes charge? He does. Uh -huh. <laughs> he does. And who are you in crisis? I, I'm, the, I'm the bigger person, let me say that. Um, I would let someone have their way, yeah? Mm -hmm. I, don't like, I don't like conflicts. So when something like that comes, I, I know how to shut up and just keep it still. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay, I find this very interesting because I think most of us have a different perspective of how an only child will react. And let me hear from Yvette. Who are you in crisis? Who am I in crisis? Um, I'm very, so one thing that I've gotten also from being an only child is if there's, if it's not you, then who else? So I like to, I like to face, you know, crisis head on. So if there's something that needs to be done, then I'll check what needs to be done. How do I go about it? How do I fix this? Um, I panic a lot, but in crisis, I tend to be very solution oriented. I like to, I like to find a solution to things and get things done. So that's who I am in crisis. So is this because it was modeled to you? 
Yes, yes, it was. I learned to take responsibility for myself at a very young age because my mom had me also at a very young age. And she just like, um, she said her mom also had to work. So even my mom had to work and had to get things done. So I had to take responsibility for myself and do things at a very young age. So that trickled down in, even into adulthood. So I don't have any, I don't have a problem with taking charge and getting things done because that's something I got. Um, growing up and just being that it was just me. Um, of course, she did put structures in place, you know, making sure that I had a nanny and my family as well, my extended family was very hands-on in trying to come in and help and be with me where they could. But um, from a very young age, I learned to be very independent, um, take charge for myself, sometimes even have conversations that young children wouldn't ordinarily be having. So that, 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 that's something that um, I experienced. You're a single mother, yes? Yes, I am. Who are you in a relationship? Um, as a single mom? Yes, or even just Yvette. Who are you with, in a relationship in those parameters? Um, I, 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 I think I experienced myself in two different ways. So as a child, <clears throat> I was very extroverted, very loud. Um, in my own bubble, thinking, you know, things just happen the way you'd like them. But <laughs> into adulthood, I've learned that life has its own way of, of working things out. So now I'm more, more reserved, very, very calculated in relationships. And um, I'd say very calculated. So I don't just, I don't do things um, as freely or on a whim as I was, as I did back then. Mm -hmm. Now I'm very calculated, very reserved and you know, I think about things twice before I do them. So that's just, that's me in a relationship. All right. Interesting. Yes. Brenda, yeah. who are you yeah. in a relationship? Um, I'd say I'm an oversharer, first of all. You're the I what? I'm an oversharer. Ah. <laughs> I tend to overly communicate. So I don't know if that's part of, you know, being an only child where, you know, when you're in your own space a lot, like Yvette was saying, you have a lot of moments where you learn to communicate by yourself. So I'm not really sure if that's a communication, but you're really talking to yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever I'm around people, um, generally or anybody I'm trying to formulate a relationship with, I'll tend to be very expressive, you know, just trying to get into people's minds and hearts and just try to understand what do you need, where you at, how can I meet your needs, um, just in the sense of trying to, I guess, form uh, a bubble of friendship, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I tend to, yeah, talk in my communicating and not is what my strong suit is in any relationship, because, you know, without communication, then what do you have? So learning how to express that is what has been my uh, focus in relationships. And uh, do, do you struggle with uh, creating parameters, boundaries for yourself? I didn't used to, but growing up now, as a, in the space I'm in now, I'm learning to be very accommodative of other people and what other people need and want. Um, again, growing up an only child, it was always about me and what mattered to me. Hmm. So where I found myself having to try and strike a balance is now as an adult, you're trying to formulate healthy relationships. So it can't just be, you can't just solely be the only focus of everything. So that's now what I'm trying to learn how to balance is to accommodate for other people and compromise what I want to allow what they need to be also factored into my decision and to whatever um, space or situation we're in. Okay, so... That so I'm, uh huh. Let's take to. let's take uh, a few steps back into you know your memory lane. When you were younger, yeah. as you're saying, now that you're learning to compromise, does that mean when you yeah. were younger, trying to figure out relationship, friendships, and all that, it was about me, yeah. myself, and I? It was, yeah. Unfortunately, it was um, just because of learning to do it by myself, being alone too many times, and just being um, in my own little bubble. It was mostly about me, right? Mm. So, you know, and my mom, like I've said, she's a single mom, so it was just me and her. And she was very liberal and very open-minded and kind of just let me find my own path. So, you know, the ability to kind of allow other people's wants and needs was never my top priority. <laughs> it was always about what I need and what I want, and that's it. You know, there's no in-between. 
So now growing up, of course, you realize that's not how you, you know, handle relationships. You have to compromise and allow people into your space. So that's what I would say right now is my biggest struggle is learning to allow people into my space, <laughs> you know, uh, and not necessarily just make it about myself. Ah, interesting perspective. If we can have all the ladies back on screen, I have two questions. First of all, when you find yourself in crisis, is there an innate instinct to call mommy dear? Hands up. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Hello. Um, <laughs> all right, Brenda. Also, um, when you are actually making friends and all that, do you have the tenacity to carry on even when somebody is not treating you well or the first sign of conflict, you're out? Anybody? <laughs> Hannah? <laughs> I see Brenda raising her hand. Hannah, what's your situation with that? Um, I'm very patient. Okay. I'm very patient. I just don't run when something happens. I can... Um, tolerate? Yes, I can tolerate for a while. Yes, uh -huh. I it, just don't run. Okay. <laughs> Yvette? Um, before, uh, it, it was, I, I, was, I used to run. So the first sign of conflict or if anything is not going in a way that I would like, I used to run. But with time, I've learned that um, things change or things don't always pan out the way you would want them to and people are different. So now my tolerance for dealing with people has, has grown. Uh -huh. So now I tend to give you a couple of chances before I, you know, I, I cancel you or I, <laughs> I, I decide to walk out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that, so being an only child, then once you gain connections or relationships with people, then you really hold them dear. Um, so you don't, for me, I never want to bring you into so close into my space. And then at the first sign of conflict or when there's trouble, then I cancel you out. No. Mm -hmm. So I tend to give you chances. And when you make a conscious effort to try and correct whatever it is that's not sitting well with me, then that means you care. So I still let you in my uh -huh. space and in my circle. All right, mm -hmm. and Brenda has said she's in that space where she's uh, really trying to be accommodative and mm -hmm. find yeah. the balance between the two uh, worlds. Now, Gregory, the reason why I needed to understand who they are is so that we also see who the only child is when they are socializing, when they're going about their adulthood and they're being part of a bigger society. So let's go back to the parent who is parenting an only child. What should you be aware of to also give them a chance at having social skills, also standing on their own two feet? Uh, the first item is, first of all, to understand your inner child. As a parent? Yes. Everybody in us, including myself, we have inner children. Uh, what moves you, uh, how you relate with yourself, it actually comes from your, from your child. Because I said at the onset of this particular show that your childhood gives you your, bio, your, your psychological blueprint. So if you have a wounded child, you'll ever continue wounding people. If you are a wonderful child, you will continue bubbling. So, to the parent, first of all, understand what kind of a child you have, because that is exactly what we use in parenting. Mm. So, the inner, my, my child is what I use to parent this particular child that has come into the world. So, first of all, as a child, go into, the, into your inner child and possibly understand what makes you tick, are you wounded, are you not wounded, what are your compulsive, you know, Every aspect of it, what are your addictions, every part of it, there are quite many. Codependency, mm. how do you relate with people, are you holding people, do you, do, do you have a no? Because many, many of the adults don't have a no. So if, you, if I don't have a no, I cannot raise a child who has a no. So that one tells you boundaries will actually be, be compromised. Anyway, so as a parent, I also need to know the developmental stages of a child. So one year, what is under ch that this particular child negotiating? It's either mm -hmm. they trust the world or they mistrust the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? How often they are changed, how often they are, they are fed, and even the environment, is it tensed? If you see your child not sleeping, check on the environment. Because they have to sleep for like 22 hours. If they're not sleeping, it's because they, it's, there is tension. And kids relate with us using emotions. Our ability to think come later. 
but ability to be in touch with our emotions. That is what we are actually born with. So for me as a child, for me as a parent, one, understand your inner child. The second one, understand the developmental issues, the developmental stage that your child is. They are one year, two years, three years, four years, preteen, teen, young adult, and learn what does it really mean to be, to be that age. And then allow them that space to be. Allow them to make mistakes. Some of our parents did not allow us to make mistakes. I'm so happy to have seen Chris Kirubi, a completely different person, i.e. very competitive. Why? He was allowed to make mistakes. If we want investors in this country, let's allow our kids to make mistakes because they learn from it. But people who will not be allowed by any family whatsoever to make mistakes, we are timid, we are always calculative, mm -hmm. we fear losses, all right? So basically... For me, parenting and the family structure really allow somebody to be. If you look at these particular ladies, they are phenomenal, possibly they are ladies, who they have married is very, very important. If she would be married by a last born, believe you me, this relationship will not work. Why? This relationship mostly will not work. A first born would, because I know how to have space. But the other kids, when you're doing the bath order, space is actually mm -hmm. anchored on the... On the, on the birth order that I had. The two of them meet as the only kids. It will, be, it will be work. It will be work that they have to do to make their relationship being functional. Because also, the relationship has its own cycle. Where there is a lot of stress is when there is we are, we are, we are, the, the, um, the birth giving uh, period in any, in any relationship. That is where a lot of stress is. Because there you have to really get as a lady, get to yourself, take care of this particular person, this the other person is there. So there is a lot of needs, especially mm -hmm. emotionally, that are, that, are, that are going on there. So like her getting possibly a firstborn, it would really work. In the middle child, they would really have to work, but it has to be deliberate. It has to be deliberate. And also for the parent, kindly understand you also your needs. Before we get there, let's go back to the fact that you said an only child and a lastborn wouldn't work. Why? Yes. The only child keeps to himself, mostly. Reaching out, not many because uh, be raised in town where there is a lot of insecurity here and now. So your parent will actually want to know who are you and who are you with, who are your friends, etc. The last child on the other, the, the last born on the other side, depending on the, on the age, on the how the distance, the age, mm -hmm. how many years mm -hmm. from second last, less than... Four years is actually a tragedy. Why? I have to be taken. I have to be taken care of. So I have to be t taken care of by somebody whose emotions, who knows only to keep to himself, who knows how to take care of himself. And before he takes care of you, you have to learn to reciprocate for them to grow. Mm. If I'm not reciprocating the same, they will not grow. Actually, I'm used to be alone emotionally. I'm used to be alone. I'm used to actually under, you know, introspecting and understanding myself. I have my own space, very safe space. The flip side of it, I allow everybody into, this, into myself uh -huh. without even limits. Why? I didn't allow. And you'll find those people being mended a lot, their businesses. People would come, get items on loan, not even pay, because their boundaries are fluid. Boundaries actually trickle to every aspect of our lives. Interesting perspectives there. And uh, it's interesting before I take the short break, Yvette and Hannah, when you hear Gregory say this, does it make sense, especially for Yvette, because Hannah has already told us who she's married to. Yvette, when you think about the guys you are attracted to, mm -hmm. is it only children, middle, last bonds? Fast bonds. <laughs> middle. <So, laughs> uh, Yvette? I tend to be attracted to firstborns mostly, and now mm -hmm. even when I track my dating record, for the last ones it hasn't worked. But most of the time I tend to be attracted to firstborns, so that's very interesting to find out. Uh huh. And what was working with the firstborns? Um, they tend to, so now that you as, as an only child have created that island, they tend to to have an understanding, like they, they can be the bigger person to some extent, so mm. they can meet you halfway or even go beyond halfway. Uh -huh. For the last one, sometimes it's, 
like even me, I'm special. So <laughs> I mean, I guess we're all special. So I guess the firstborn has a tendency to meet you halfway or even way more than halfway in my Interesting. experience. Interesting. Yeah. Hannah, mm -hmm. hubby is the last born mid, firstborn? Middle. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, bo only ch any boy child or amongst boys? There are three boys. Aha, uh -huh. which now yes. explains why he's the one who is in charge, sort of to speak, now yes. that he's used to dealing with others. Yes. Brenda, for you? Yeah. Who, um, who are you attracted to? Huh? It's been very random. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because it, I think for me, it's just that ability to be um very decisive and to take charge and be the bigger person um and just allow me that space to have my little bubble so the understanding the emotional understanding to know that i need that and it's not a reflection on you or our relationship it's just that i need my moments my bubble my space so there has to be the guys i have tended to be very attracted to are the ones who understand that fact and are not shy to you know allow me to be that person so it, I don't even think it's been very random. It's been first ones, last ones, but I think the emotional maturity for me is what um, has stood out. Which also comes with its own security. So perhaps that's the attracting factor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's that space of security. Sure. Interesting, interesting. We take a short break. When we come back, we'll still talk more about the only child. And it's interesting because in other forums, it has been said that that extra attention to this child is not necessarily a bad thing, especially in a world where parents are being told to take time to know their children and actually walk life with them. We'll talk more about that. But before I take that short break, remember the Nation Media Group is kicking off Kenya's fast share buyback program at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Exchange and the company targets buying back up to 10% of its issued shares between today and September 24th. That event is ongoing. Let's listen in. Happy to be part of this event here today. First, allow me to start by acknowledging the critical role played by National Media Group, board, management, and staff. Nairobi Securities Exchange and the advisory team led by Faida Investment Bank. This indeed is a, a historical event as it is the first of its kind in the Kenyan capital markets space. It clearly demonstrates the commitment by national media to capitalize on available alternative means and strategies of creating value to its shareholders. Globally, we have seen what we see today here as share buybacks. Many reasons behind this, and some of them have been mentioned here, but I'll just mention a few. Allocation of excess cash to shareholders in a straightforward manner. Secondly, taking advantage of undervaluation of certain stocks. Third, quick fix for financial statements to boost financial ratios where it is necessary. We all know that share buybacks have been very common in the US, but I can also tell you Europe has become a bit active on this, and we have seen inroads into Africa if you looked at the experience in South Africa. But just to comment that following COVID-19 pandem pandemic, which has ravaged many economies, including the very advanced, many share buy buyback transactions are expected. We have already seen a number by very huge global uh, corporates, of course, for those who know, advanced micro devices, Apple, Warren Buffett, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, they have all announced similar transactions just to give their shareholders great value after these transactions. We are also aware that share buybacks were introduced in this country in 2015 with the new Companies Act, 
But this act is very careful if you look at it because it has do's and don'ts that are actually aimed to bring some certainty as companies go into share buybacks. But one of the questions we have asked ourselves as regulators of listed companies and others were, are these provisions adequate? And of course, we did this just to ensure that when these processes are done, there is fairness, efficiency, and of course, everybody feeling they were fairly treated. We therefore did a jurisdictional analysis around the world to just see how does these different markets react to these transactions. And this is why we were compelled to come up with guidelines to guide more in addition to the provisions you see in the Companies Act. Let me say, in the process, we did engage the market, and I'm happy to say those guidelines have since been internally approved and shall be released next month to the market so that they are taken advantage of by companies wishing to actually undertake share buyback transactions. Sides and, of course, sounds coming from the NSC, where the Nisha Media Group is kicking off Kenya's fast share buyback program at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. As I said, the company targets buying back up to 10% of its issued shares between today and September 24th, which is valued or uh, shares capped at 20.7 million. A lot more of these details coming your way. And, of course, if you'd like to follow up on the same, this is streaming live digitally on all our social media platforms. And you you can follow up on the same as such. France versus Switzerland, Monday, 28th June at 10 p.m. Company Bay, Nista Times. Get connected today for only 999 aerial decoder and 2,699 satellite dish. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Fresh Fry Ginger has ginger oil, which is good for a healthy living lifestyle. It combines wonderfully on salads, stir fries, when basted on roasted meat, or simply sprinkled on your favorite dish. Now available in 250ml, 500ml, and 1 liter. Malaria ni ugonjwa hatari sana unaoua watu wengi hapa Kenya. Japo kuko na corona, hatari ya malaria bado iko. Mtoto huyu alikuwa na joto jingi, kutetemeka, kuumwa na viungo na uchovu. Alikimbizwa hospitali ya umma ambako sheria za COVID-19 uzingatiwa na ni salama kwa shughuli ya upimaji. Vipimo vilionyesha kuwa ana malaria na papo hapo daktari akampa dawa za malaria na kumshauri azimalize na ili kujikinga wawe wakilala ndani ya neti iliyotibiwa. Malaria husambazwa na mbu. Walio hatarini ni watoto wa chini ya miaka tano na akina mama wajawazito. Kupimwa na kutibiwa ni bure katika hospitali zote za umma. Usisahau adui malaria. Zero malaria huanza na mimi. Chukua jukumu leo. Komesha malaria. Ujumbe huu umelizwa kwenu na Wizara ya Afya. The World Athletics Under 20 athletes are the next big names in sports. It's astonishing. Be part of their growing pains and glory in wins. One of the great Olympic moments. A new world record. It's been obliterated. Witness greatness in the making live on NTV. And a fantastic finish. Setting the pace for the nation. Invest in the prime plots from Finca Properties Limited, Equita Gardens Nanyuki, a gated community ready for immediate development. We also have Konza Suburbs, a gated community within Konza Metropolis. For details, call us today. Finca Properties Limited, prime and affordable.
Thank you for staying with your world. My name is Gladys Gashanja. This morning we're talking about the only child and we have Hannah Yvette Brenda representing the only children and of course Gregory Moro who is a counselling psychologist helping us understand the psychology behind the only child. And uh, speaking of which, somebody joins us on the line. Her name is Ashley Osite who is also an only child. Ashley, listening to everybody else here, do you relate or what is your experience growing up as an only child? Ashley? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So what is your experience growing up as an only child? <laughs> it, was so, it was a really weird experience at first. Mm -hmm. uh, weird in a way that uh, when you go to school, everyone talks about, I have a brother, I have a sister. Yes. And then all of a sudden, for you, you can't say that. So but the more you grow up, the more you know you're, you're in this world alone. You only have your parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And has that had an effect on you as an adult today? Yeah. Yes. How? I, yeah. I, I do all everything alone. Huh. Yeah. Like, I really know I have... I have no one else apart from my parents because I, 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 I have both parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are alive, they are together, but they just had me. But in anything else, I know this is me. If it's supporting my parents, it is me. Mm. If it's getting my issues together, it is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and uh, when you say you have a mommy and daddy, there was a mention about the fact that at times you can get caught up in their own world, you know, where you become an ally more than you are a child to them. Have you ever found yourself in such a position? Oh, yeah, sometimes I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and how did you deal with it or how do you deal with that? You just need to get a balance. Mm -hmm. A balance in where this is now my life, this is me, this is what I want. Okay. And this is what uh, I think I should try and help my parents with because sometimes they keep to keep me so close to them that because they think they think I'm the only hope they have. I see. They have to, yeah. I really have to balance my way in. Okay. And speaking about being overprotective, did you ever feel smothered growing up? Even right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even right now. We uh. are very overprotective. And uh, do it's you their nature. do you ever tell them that uh, I need my space? I'm, I know I'm your kid, but I need my space, Bana. Yeah, no. <laughs> ah, okay. I'm feeling. Hmm. Interesting, because yeah. this is something that a counselling psychologist said. You think it, you want to say it, but you can't because you don't have any other family. It's just them. Yeah. So I really try to, like, I don't want them to feel like they don't have any share at all. They, they are not the same as other parents. Mm. Like a parent who has like five kids, know that if so, don't work the way they want to kids, they have one. I see. So for me, this mm. is I'm like the old five children in one. Mm. Okay, yeah. Ashley, do you have a family of your own? No, not yet. In your future plans, do you intend to have one child or have 12? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think I can manage a big number because <laughs> I'm not sure big numbers. Okay, so do you want to have more than one child? I would. It, I would advise anyone, if you, you are able to get more than one child, please do. At oh. least to, have, to get a friend, for, for the child to have a friend. I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley, for calling yeah. in and also being part of this conversation. We wish you well. Okay, now there's something that uh, Ashley said that I think, is it Yvette or Hannah that uh, relate with it when it comes to responsibility? When taking care of your mom, it's all on you. There's no one else to call and say, who has that experience? Is it Hannah or Yvette? Yvette? Yeah. Hannah, is that you? Yes. Okay, what's experience like? Um... It's kind of challenging because whenever my mother needs something, she will call me and I will have to get it for her. 
because I have nobody else to say, hey, changa 50 year, I changa 50, no. I have to do it on my own. Mm. Sometimes it's so stressful because she would think I don't want to do it. Or sometimes she thinks you have the money and you don't want to give. And sometimes you don't have at all, at all. But you still have to do it because you're the only child and she's dependent on you, nobody else. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so are you saying that you are unable to say no? You can't say no. Wow. How do you say no? <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't. Oh. She can never understand. Yvette, yeah. what's your experience? That it's like we're reading from the very same script, same script. That, ha that has a, been my exact experience. You, you just, you, you can't afford to not have, or you can't afford to not come through. Mm -hmm. And also being raised as an only child and as a child to a single mom, you see how your parents struggles. And one of the things you aim for as an adult is to be able to give that back, to support your parent, to maybe even compensate for the struggle that you saw them going through. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very difficult when they need you to come in and help or support in some kind of way and you cannot do it. Sometimes you have to go above, over and beyond just to be able to provide. Mm. So saying no or I don't have is definitely not an option. Wow. You have that, to come through. That's <laughs> a lot of pressure. Brenda, do you mm. resonate? Brenda? Yes, sorry, I'm here. Uh -huh. um, slightly, I do resonate, although mine is more so towards planning for the future. Because being an only child, as they've said, you literally have no other siblings to say, okay, guys, we need to make a plan. This is what we need to get for mom. This is what we need to plan for. Mm -hmm. So my pressure usually just comes from the place of, as she grows older and I'm the only child, um, you know, what measures am I putting in place to make sure by the time she is, you know, retiring, um, she's well taken care of. So that's where my pressure comes from just not having um, a team of siblings to discuss it with and have, you know, plans with to, mm. towards that direction. That's my particular um, challenge. And also the pressure of having kids, because I don't have them yet. Mm. Um, <laughs> so you can imagine having to think about, okay, so if you don't come through with the grandkids, um, <laughs> she will have no grandkids. Ah. So it's usually... It's a, it's a lot to think about in regards to those few particular things on my struggles. Okay, we yeah. hear you. Now, definitely, you don't have kids yet. Hannah has three. Yeah. Yvette, are we going beyond this one, God willing? Um, uh, currently, no. Okay. I, I honestly don't intend to have more children oh. because for me, it is a personal decision of I want to give my child the very best. Mm -hmm. And so in my plan, I feel like having only her will enable me to do that. However, because however, because I have experienced what it's like to be an only child, I think I know where it is that I feel I can tweak and do better uh -huh. and give her a different experience. But just as now, because we plan and God is the ultimate planner, just now I feel like I just want to have one. If mm. I was to add maybe just one more. <laughs> yeah, we hear you. We hear you. Gregory, yeah. very, very interesting perspectives here. But I hear that the pressure... I, mean, I think you had alluded to this earlier, being the only child and the parents relying on you can actually be detrimental at some point, even as you were sharing earlier. Yes, yes, um, it can be. And allow me to bring in, uh, because we're in Africa and uh, cultural, cult culture is a very important aspect. Eh? The boy child in this sense, in, in aspect of responsibility, i.e., um, Everything now, you're, you're the one seen. You have to represent your mother. You have to represent that family. Subsequently, you're marrying. Subsequently, a question of responsibility of even taking, your, taking care of your mother, in this sense, in the childhood. Either this lady will come and live in your own family. So you have to manage two ladies mm. who are actually looking at you. And nobody is going. Mm. So you have to learn to balance between mom and, and the wife. So it is, it, is, it, is, it is quite a challenge. Eh? Knowing that it is only me and nobody else, quite, quite it's a challenge. And for me, one of the items I would really suggest is to have a very functional social support, people who understand you that you're the only child, and possibly a spouse who actually understand the dynamics of 
what it is all about because not many individuals would understand what being an, being the only child uh, being the only child means eh? and even in terms of personal security you know personal emotional security mm -hmm. you have to be very 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 careful as a as 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 a person you know because it can be it can be quite as a challenge if you actually have not negotiated through the developmental stages and really gotten a sense of somebodyness. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Because whoever comes will either, act, and actually you are too exposed to your mother. This is somebody you can tell, you cannot tell a no. And if you have to tell a no, you have to really summon yourself. It is work in itself. Because you, because you are the only two of you in this world, you know, connected. You know, if it is not me, it's her. Mm. And if it is not her, it's me. So it is quite, 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 quite of a challenge. For the male side, you have to actually put in, uh, put in the mother in the, in, even in the equation of the kind of the family structure you will have. Okay, now let's speak to the parents because as you said, it starts with the parent for yes. them to actually pass on a healthy, you know, perspective of life. Yes. So what should a parent parenting a single child keep in mind in this perspective? But for the parent, uh, allow me to share five needs that every parent has to give a child. One is recognition. That by the fact that I gave birth to you, you're mine and you are there. Whether you become successful or not successful, you're mine. You communicate recognition. That for me is very, very important. The second aspect is validation. Mm -hmm. Whether you do something good, you're mine. You know, I identify what you're doing and I validate it. The other one is nurturing. I have to nurture you in this particular world life skills, cook, wash, do what that pertains. I'll show you. You've seen me doing it. Mm -hmm. We are doing it together. Kindly do it for yourself. Now, let me stop you there just for a moment. We need to go back to the NSC and uh, take on some of the speeches that are going on. 1.3 billion, you're still quite safe as far as the buffers are concerned. So that is quite, quite impressive. We are now at the session where we're getting to the bell ringing. I should ask you, Jeff, you know, the last time I moderated that bell ringing was pre-COVID. Does it happen with masks or without? With masks. <laughs> in space out, eh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. So I'd like to call uh, on stage Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, the CEO of NSC, Dr. Wilfred Kiboro, the chairman of Nation Media Group, Mr. Kiprono Kitoni, chairman of NSC, Mr. Wycliffe Shamia, and um, Mahesh Acharya, please come on set and be sure we are spacing well. Mr. Bob Karina, please, sorry for that oversight. Could I have uh, Ke Kelvin with the sanitizer, please? Mr. Stephen Gitagama, please. So you'll sanitize it and give Mr. Odundo. You'll sanitize and, and give him. The, the, chair, the chairman, huh? Yeah. Oh, the bell is there. Okay, so, so all right. Great, I was uh, going for the smaller one. I'm sorry. Mr. Geoffrey has reminded me. So we always uh, celebrate such um, market moving developments, and we are here to celebrate Nation Media Group as it uh, kicks off. I should say East Africa's first share buyback program, and we know many, com many more companies will be following suit with this. And I want to invite uh, Dr. Wilfred Kiboro to lead us in the bell ringing as we celebrate this moment. Chairman. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Asante Nisana. Gentlemen, don't leave the stage yet. Are we ready on the live side for trading? I want to invite you to just... Oh. We ring again? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Did I sit? Okay. All right, Chairman, please, uh, you lead us again in the bell ringing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.
And I will just request you to leave via this side because we're going to witness uh, the live trading on that, led by um, Baida here. So please, gentlemen, after you. Would you just come around so I will space out uh, adequately? So we just witnessed the bell ringing, kick-starting Kenya's past year buyback program at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And this has been initiated by the Nation Media Group and the company targets buying back up to 10% of its issued shares between today and September 24th. All right. So we'll have more details on how trading went uh, later on in our subsequent bulletins. And remember, you can be part of this even as we stream live on our digital spaces. Now back to the conversation and uh, Gregory, you were touching on the five major needs of a child that yes. a parent needs to provide. I, I said, uh, I said recognition. Uh, Perhaps you can just take us through that again. Yes, recognition, recognition mm -hmm. is by the fact that you're my son and you're my daughter. You don't need to meet any condition mm -hmm. for you to be in this world. You fit and you're worthy. I'm relating from a point of, I'm relating with you from a point out that you're worth. When if you have three or four, you're worth me. Uh, the other one is uh, validation. Whatever you do is really, is really important. Are you happy? You know, just, just recognizing that they are there. When you get into the house, say hi to all of them. See, <laughs> and you go. So you have to actually identify them as individuals and really validate them. Mm. The other one is nurturing. Allow, th allow them to actually learn from you. Do things with them. Let them see. Let them... Let them interact with you. The other one is protection and variation. Those five childhood needs. And definitely provision. Yes. Yeah. See people who buy big cars just to be recognized? Back to the childhood. Mm. Somebody who will actually do things, flashy life outside there, but inside themselves, what are they wanting? Either validation or recognition. Mm. Anyway. It's a discussion for another day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So how do these now reflect on this only child? So this only child, it all depends with the functionality of the parent mm -hmm. and his inner child. The others who are aware that you are an entity and I'm an entity and I'm a, and I'm a companion in your life. But the others who have not differentiated from me and you, it is you living my life. Actually, whatever you do, I need to be involved. You're dating, kindly bring me to validate. Hey, mom, this is my wife. Why, why, why are you coming in with the validation? Mm. According to the culture, I've not broken any aspect. I've made my own choice. So there is that ability to, those parents who have not, so who have not um, separated themselves, they are part and parcel of this particular child. It does not matter the age. Mm -hmm. So you have to do what I've said. Actually, when they call you Shiva, hmm. because they look like that great critique in your brain hmm. who will not leave you. So such that you try to do something, you have to go and possibly consult, 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 consult. Eh? Hmm. So I, I, I think for me, uh, for the ladies, it's different because now maybe you migrate, you're married to another family. So that one creates a, a bit of space. Yeah. But if you're a male, it's actually a challenge. Because you're here, your mom is here, and Mark you, she's already become a dictator. Where you have to do things, you are there to be seen and not to be heard. You have to toe the line. It actually tampers with the individual. So mm -hmm. I, I think for me, it all, it, it's all about the parent. If you're a single lady parenting a boy child, kindly identify a mentor who is a male mm. from a very early age to allow them even internalize what malehood is all about the attitude you know of how to be because it's actually a great a great challenge because you find that when you challenge let me go to the animal world when you look at the female lion and the male lion when the two animals meet the female just submits mm. and that is natural that is natural the feminist can have their own say but for me that is natural however when you a boy is raised by the female you don't know how to stand for yourself. You don't know how to be a man. You don't know how to be competitive. So it is for me very important to just understand as a parent, and I still go back to the parent. 
with that situation, we, it's a situation you found yourself. Make the best out of it. Just learn. Just be in touch with it. You know, allow, question, what am I doing? Am I allowing this particular person to actually have their own self-concept, a concept of themselves from me? Are they doing the things that really add value to them? Because some are actually told, kindly, dad, don't work. All that I have is yours. Yeah, so don't hustle so much. When others are waking at four just to come and open their own businesses, ah, don't work that much. Why? We have, we have what it takes to live our lives. So literally you're setting themselves, them for failure Thank in you. the future. Now, even mm -hmm. as we bring this conversation to a close, I had mentioned that there is the converse of being an only child. And some people have said that extra attention to that child, not a bad thing because they have a good relationship with their parents. And also the fact that uh, seeing that they have no people to attach too much to, they're very lenient and are able to achieve much more than a person who's brought up in a big, bigger family. Hannah, does that resonate with you? Yes, it does. Okay, how? Because of the independence, you're able to, to do a lot more. Yeah, like I'm an entrepreneur mm. and I'm able to concentrate on my business 100%. And I'm able to, to, to deal with my staff. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that way it gives you time to, to really work on yourself and everything that you're doing. Without yeah. distractions, eh? Yes, without distractions. And you know, as she said earlier, this is me and it's only me. Mm. I either make it or make or, it. Or <laughs> make it. Yes. <laughs> we hear you. Yvette, do you agree? I do. I totally agree. Um, I think it, it gives you room to just focus on yourself and do you. And because you know it's either you or no one else, it's mm -hmm. make it or make it. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I really find that it, it helps me with is I'm in competition with myself. So it's if, if, if there's anything else I'm looking um, you know, aside to be able to compare with, then it's just me. So anytime I fall, I tell myself, I'll do better next time. Or maybe I'll, I'll fix this or I'll tweak this a little bit. So you're in competition with yourself. So you don't feel that much pressure to outdo anyone at the ah, end of the day. Ah, interesting yeah. perspective. Brenda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Does this resonate with you too? It does. It does. Especially what Yvette is saying. Because you do have that sense of individuality and knowing how to do things on your own. So sometimes I, from the stories I've had from people with siblings, there's that slight pressure that hits sometimes. And you tend to want to compare yourself with your siblings, you know, where are we at, you know, in the, in the family spectrum. Nani has gotten married, Nani has not gotten married. So it's just, it's literally just you and you're in competition with yourself. So it creates a healthy um, sort of competition because you're not watching what anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it resonates completely. All right. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for being so candid about your own growing up. I'm sure people are walking out of this saying, hmm, kumbe siko pekeangu, and also a lot of explanations as to how you actually view the world. Hannah Wanjirombogua, Yvette Margaret Wanzu, and Brenda Waloy, and of course Gregory, even as we bring this conversation to a close, you're parting short in as far as bringing up an only child and being an only child? Um, just accept the situation as the only child and look for your functionality, your own individuality and functionality. As a parent, agree with yourself. This is a situation I'm in and kindly get the best out of it because it is possible to raise a functional child even if you're the only parent and you're the only child in that particular family. It's possible. It's doable. Very well said, Gregory Moura, who is a counselling psychologist. Again, thank you for helping us along with this conversation. And uh, that marks the end of your world this morning. But tomorrow, I'll be back on this seat and we'll be focusing on our mental health. To be precise, post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, this is a reality for a lot of people who face traumatic events. But the question here is, how come some people are able to deal with the issue and move on and others somehow get stuck? We'll answer those questions tomorrow morning from 7 p.m. See you then.